another billionaire who is up there doing very well, thinking that he can do a better job of implementing the nanny state nationwide. So this is uh, Robert David Steele's take on this Clinton cover-up, and should we, we be worried about a Bloomberg president? I believe that it's time now for someone like Governor Kasich and Governor Abbott and maybe even Governor O'Malley to come out and point out to America that 60 percent of the electoral uh, public has been disenfranchised by the two-party tyranny. And if we go into a new election, let's say Mike Bloomberg runs, that's actually good because he'll pull votes from Hillary Clinton or, or uh, Bernie Sanders, who I consider a fraud. Um, but the bottom line here is we need a clean sheet, fresh start. We need By the way, Bloomberg, as you predicted last week, came out three days later and said he may run. Uh, and, of course, we've also got Biden talking about running now. Uh, what's your view on Hillary? I mean, she is in so much trouble. She's having, in fact, we have the video, coughing fits. She yeah, looks. Let me be crystal clear. I think Hillary Clinton is a dishonest, incompetent toad. Uh, she has absolutely no redeeming virtues. She kicked Al Gore out of the vice president's office in the old executive office building. She treats people very, very badly. All of my Secret Service contacts say that they will never, ever again work for her. She is a dishonest, cruel, uh, self person. I absolutely think that anybody who votes for Hillary Clinton is an idiot. I have uh, interviewed Jim Tucker, the late, great Jim Tucker that exposed Bilderberg, which is the secret Davos for new viewers and listeners. He said that they tell people, do not look in her eyes. She doesn't tip. She treats the smallest people and tells them you are scum. She is yep. so hateful even to her staff. They said that, and, and then I had a chance infiltrating Bilderberg quite a few times to actually then go back the days after. Now they just close it for days after, so I have trouble, and talk to the staff who wouldn't talk to me, especially English speakers in Virginia, and the police and everybody. And, and, and you know, the first few days, they won't talk to us. But then after that, they go, oh, here's the documents. They're horrible. We've never been treated so bad. These are evil men. It's like a James Bond movie is what they say. That's like, is, is that Spectre? You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Is there anything that can unseat uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton? And, and, and out of all the players, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders talks about inequity but doesn't tell people why it's crony capitalism. Uh, we, uh, you know, Hillary, we know, is the consummate insider saying she's not. Uh, you know, what do you think of Ted Cruz? What do you think of Donald Trump? What's your take on election 2016 from Red Square? Well, Alex, you know, we entered really a, a vortex a few weeks ago. The event horizon was crossed when Donald Trump was on Alex Jones. And what I mean by that is you've been in the trenches for years developing this audience of an alternative media with an alternative voice. And here's a presidential candidate who realizes that mainstream media is a complete waste of time. And he goes on the Alex Jones show. Now, Bernie Sanders on the other side of the aisle also realizes that he can reach out with you know, a main, with with an audience of of um, alternative media as well, and it gets in, enormous traction. But this is a presidential election. We're going to sweep out all the old, and we're bringing in the new. I think Hillary Clinton is toast, and I think that Donald Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. Sixty-four percent now Republicans think that Trump's going to be the nominee. Personally, I'd like to see Trump get in the White House because I think. He would be the right billionaire at the right time to kick out the other billionaires. Remember, Vladimir Putin had to kick out the kleptocrats when he came into office in the early 90s, and the Russian economy benefited as a result. Putin is anti-kleptocrat. He's anti-oligarch. Same thing with Trump. If Trump gets in, he will kick out the other oligarchs, the Michael Bloombergs, the billionaires that, that are ruling and destroying America, the Koch brothers. He'll get rid of them. That's my thought. And by the way, he said he likes Putin and what he's done, kicking out the cronies. And so I don't usually say man on a white horse. You know, I want some guy, a strong man to save me. We're already having him try to give people martial law and no one cares. I mean, we've reached such a crisis point that we know Jeb Bush and Hillary ain't it. I mean, you know, there's no, no look, way look. Trump could possibly be, be. And, you know, I don't want to say behind the scenes stuff, but Trump claims he's aware of almost everything, basically. Look, we had in America the robber barons who were anxious to destroy America. And Teddy Roosevelt assumed the White House and he destroyed. He became the trust buster and he, he swept out the plutocrats. The Sherman Antitrust up, Act of 1906. And he, he, he uh, broke up the oil company, Standard Oil, et cetera. He was a, he, a lot of people in his class thought he betrayed his class because he was uh, a rich guy. The Roosevelt family, very rich Fifth Avenue family. But he assumed power and he kicked out the oligarchs, the robber barons, as they were called. And that's what America needed. That's what I thought Obama was going to do when he, when he came into office. I thought he was going to, you know, throw down and get rid of a lot of these uh, crony capitalists. Well, I wouldn't even care. I mean, I'd care less if we had some robber barons that actually wanted to hire people like Henry Ford and actually said, I pay people so they can buy a car. I mean, it's, it's like these are anti-free market I mean, look at Obama going to Africa saying, you can't have cars, you can't have air conditioning. Why not say, we're going to develop clean cars and air conditioning? I mean, I mean, just to say it from Air Force One on a red carpet. 
Well, what we have in this century is the billionaire class that uses financial products and financialization. So it's different than Henry Ford, who manufactured cars, and there's something tangible about that, and there was a manufacturing base. But here you have billionaires that have gotten their billions through flipping paper, through stocks and bonds and financialization and derivatives. And that adds absolutely nothing to the economy. And they're entrenched in the system along with the central bank. But as I said earlier, it's remarkable that Deutsche Bank and other bankers are begging Mario Draghi at the European Central Bank to stop printing money because he's doing more harm than good. I've been saying it on your show for several years now that printing money causes deflation. It doesn't fight deflation. Now, Deutsche Bank and other bankers are agreeing with what I've been saying on your show for years. That all the money printing, all it does, it supports the zombie banks who use all the free money to just roll over all of the debt that's no good. It's junk debt. It should, they should be allowed to fail if, in fact, this was a free market. But by keeping them propped up with all the money printing, they are a huge impediment for economic growth. And now even the bankers themselves realize that they don't want the free money anymore. It's just killing the economy. Sure. What are the next uh, triggers? And then I want to get into some hardcore news and take calls. What, in your view? The next triggers are the in, in the oil market. What's remarkable is that if you look at the price of oil, it's gone down. But the transportation index, which is a, a, an index of stocks tied to transportation, it's also gone down. But usually if the price of oil goes down, transportation companies go up or people benefit from a lower gas price. But now we're seeing lower oil prices trigger a financial collapse because all the oil is backed by junk bonds. And those junk bonds are now all deflating in value. They're all crashing. So the actual, the lower oil price is not helping the economy and at let's all. Go further, let's go further. Crisis. As the oil companies got caught by the AP in 2000 on a six-year plan that went back to 94, the Big Ten kept meeting in New York and in uh, other U.S. cities. In, in their lawsuit, they got the documents saying, we're going to have wildcatters in the future. They predicted the shale market coming up, the, the tar sands. They said, we've got to get fake environmentalists to, 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 that, that we fund to shut down. This is in the documents, to shut down all these new refineries and don't let new ones get opened. So even if the Saudis or somebody have a war, and they saw this you know, 17, 18 years ago, and lower prices, we will create an artificial bottleneck. So oh, gas should be like a dollar a gallon now that would actually help the economy it, it, it hurts a bunch of other areas of the economy to have oil that low but it should be translating like a dollar 10 okay or a dollar 20 no it's not oil it's still a, it's still so, 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 we're, so, so we're getting both oil's really plunging in the real market but by the time we get it it's so rigged we're still paying way more than we should because the oil companies have the refineries and are, and, and it, so it doesn't matter if there's a glut they've suspended reality yet again kaiser a double but, screw job two, two points two points number one uh, you made there in terms of the gas price. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that behind this industry is a structured financial market of bonds that, that are all now unable to pay their interest payments and they, they're all collapsing. So th this is this is causing a chain reaction. And Deutsche all these Bank, other loans to the wildcatters are right, going belly Deutsche up. Bank, Deutsche Bank is a huge lender to the oil business, and that's why it's going down. Now, you mentioned the, the shale industry for a second. The shale industry in America w was not even profitable when oil was $80 a barrel. The whole shale so-called revolution was a hoax because the life of an average shale project is not does not last long enough to pay the debt that you, that the, that you need to It was to an investor hoax. It is a hoax. It, there's always cash flow negative from day one. And that's when oil was $80 a barrel. Now the oil at $30 a barrel. Not only are you getting a negative cash flow on all the shale rigs in America, but all the junk bonds and now all the banks that lent, like a Deutsche Bank or all these money center banks that lent into this hoax, they're now collapsing. So it doesn't matter if gas price goes to 20 cents a gallon. If, if in fact, the, 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 the credit market sees up completely like in 2008, which, which is that now going to happen again, you, that, that's the least of your worry is that you, you're going to you know, pay. And then the property tax market debt. goes belly up because they're not getting all that oil and gas money. It is because they'll bring in capital controls, bail-ins, bank seizures, money seizures. So, so why are you paying 50 cents a gallon? If the bank just, just took all the money out of your account like they did in Cyprus, 
you know, it doesn't matter. And if so it's you're free, saying that's they coming. Just took all your money. That brings me to the next point. We, we played this video twice. I'm not going to play it again right now. We'll play it next hour when David Knight's in. But video, Senator Warren's authorization to use military force bill. Is